Hello everybody and welcome back to another Linux distro review with IG. Today we are looking at Linux Mint 13, the KDE release. So the Mint team have been very quick to get onto their uh, various releases for this release cycle. So we've seen the Cinnamon and the Mate edition, we've also seen the XFCE edition uh, hit release candidate, and today we're going to have a look at the KDE edition. Now I've already tricked this out a bit because I have actually installed it on my native system. So actually in the vein of Linux battery I have customized this just a little bit. And, uh, and now I'll show you around the system now that I've sort of tricked it out the way I like it. I'm gonna just talk about the things that I like about this system, the stuff that uh, still niggles me a little bit, but uh, and I'm also gonna talk a little bit about why I like KDE and why I like using it. So, first up, Mint KDE does look very polished. It's KDE 4.8, KDE 4.8 works fine. We've already looked at KDE 4.8 before. The icon set is very nice and they actually give you an icon set this time. Uh, they actually give you a few icon sets to choose from and the one that I really appreciate is the Faenza KDE because uh, honestly there's nothing better than having such a colorful icon theme uh, with KDE. So you can see here we get a few out of the box here with Oximentary, Oxygen, Mint KDE and Faenza. So Faenza is what I'm using at the moment. Uh, you've got the different styles there of course. KDE is customization heaven. You can go to town on whatever you like to do with your system. There's really nothing that you can't change in KDE which is fantastic. You can change throw in your widgets, throw in panels, uh, throw different widgets on those panels. As you can see here I've got a global menu happening up the top here uh, which is pretty sweet. I also followed the directions of a very cool guy on Google Plus so I shall put links to his page in the description below uh, because it also has links to how to get like HUD menu uh, functionality out of your run command menu up the top here which is pretty awesome. So you can get the same heads up display menu that you get on Ubuntu's Unity here on KDE as well, so that's pretty sweet. So usually the first thing I do when I install a KDE system is customize the keyboard shortcuts so that the meta and space open up the run command interface, because honestly that's got to be one of the best features of KDE. And second thing I do is get a wallpaper slideshow happening, which I already had before with the lovely elementary wallpapers. And then the third thing I do is usually install some apps. Now of course it's Linux Mint, so you're going to want to look at the Software Manager. Now we've already had a look at the Software Manager and I'm not going to spend too much time here at all, uh, because it works. It doesn't exactly blend in the same way that all the other apps do, but it still looks nice and the applications, uh, they've, done it, they've done a decent job here integrating it into the KDE look. Uh, and, and it doesn't look like too much of a stranger. You've got quick links to all of your favorite applications here. It will pull in all the dependencies you need and will manage your applications very, very nicely. Also, the update manager is the next most important thing of a Mint system. And the update manager has matured nicely in recent times. You can see here it's refreshing my repositories to check if there's anything new under the sun. And you'll find that actually under the software sources, uh, which are essentially the, uh, the PPA managers for where you get your software from, uh, one thing I did appreciate is now they have uh, included some more mirrors here under the Linux Mint uh, download section so when you can shoot you can choose a, a mirror closest to you uh, so you can either get unmeted or at least very fast downloads uh, depending on your internet service provider so that is very good news and you can see here that my system is up to date so there is nothing to see here but if there were stuff up to date which uh, by the way the kernel will not update to the most recent version that will stay uh, the version that it's on because the Linux Mint team deemed that necessary and safe which is good for them uh, it'll show up by level of importance here, level of safety, the upgrade, the package number, the new version, the old version, and the size. So it's very detailed, it's very nice. This is what Mint's famous for. The other Mint tools that we have come to know and love are here as well, such as Mint Backup, the Domain Blocker, the Upload Manager, and of course the Welcome Screen that we all see when we start up Mint for the first time. I love how mature Linux Mint is getting, and, uh, and really it's such a solid base to start off uh, as a distribution. They really keep it clean, they don't give you too much junk, um, they don't try and trick, your, trick out your system too much, but they give you a very solid base that you can build on, uh, but without having to go and do all the hard yards yourself. For instance, DVD playback, music playback, videos, all the codecs are here out of the box. The system is really ready to go from when you install it. But again, it opens the gamut right up for all of your customization heaven, especially here in KDE. So I gotta be honest with you, I really love the way KDE looks now. Uh, I love the way that I've made this look. The support for my NVIDIA Optimus card is here as well with uh, courtesy of Bumblebee. 
So the power management is quite decent indeed. And with KDE 4.8, we do see some uh, steps forward as far as energy power savings are concerned. So you can customize stuff here and it will take effect depending on whether you're plugged in or on your battery. Uh, so that's very great to see and uh, KDE does earn major props in that uh, in that area. One thing I would comment though, it would be great to uh, have a quick option here to disable the desktop effects when you're running on battery. And if we have a look under desktop effects, uh, which is essentially the compiz of the KDE world. Uh, you can see here that we've got a lot of effects here to choose from that, that can keep you busy. Now, of course, if you haven't played around with KDE before, I definitely recommend you give Linux Mint a go because it's one of the easiest KDE distributions to get up and get going with. Uh, one of the best things that I love about KDE is the fact that they have these get new content uh, dialogues where you can just jump in, grab, it, grab yourself a new wallpaper, a new theme, this feature came long before any of the app stores uh, ever came into being. So it's a great way to just bolt on extra widgets, add-ons and functionality onto your KDE desktop. Now of course KDE itself has been known for to be a bit of a system hog, but to be honest I have not noticed uh, too much of uh, sluggishness. KDE itself is very very responsive, even though it still is using, uh, as you can see I'm using about uh, 800 megs here of my 8 gig, which isn't that much considering I've got 8 gig of RAM, so it's no real worry. Um, but and also you can see the CPUs chugging away simply because I have the screen cap going. Um, but if this is on a native, if this is on a native hardware and um, and you don't have anything else running, then usually you'll get somewhere between 300 and 400 megs uh, of RAM there for the KDE. Now again, if you're if you're limited with uh, CPU and memory then uh, it will drop it down a little bit and you'll probably want to disable the indexing which is uh, Strigi and uh, the Akinadi server because uh, that'll free up a lot of resources as well. But uh, apart from that, KDE runs very smoothly, very snappily and very happily on this system. Well done on the Linux Mint team. This is only at the release candidate stage but already I am smelling the quality that is baked into this distribution. Uh, so I couldn't recommend it enough if you're looking at trying out KDE. I do definitely recommend it over Kubuntu simply because this has more polish and better applications out of the box. Uh, you do get most applications that you're going to want to need for everyday tasks. So you get uh, all of the KDE graphics stuff, including Digicam this time, instead of just the Gwenview Image Viewer. Uh, you get all of the Office stuff out of the box as well. Uh, instead of the Caligra Suite, you do get LibreOffice, so that's much more familiar for most people. But you do get the best in KDE as well, which is of course the Personal Information Contact Manager. Multimedia, you get Amarok for your audio playing, Caffeine and VLC for your video, and then some other apps that I've thrown in there as well, Clementine and of course the Screencaster. Synaptic Package Manager is also here by default, which is very nice because this is one of the best ways that us old timers like to manage our packages in preference to fancy software centers. But it's very nice indeed. Performance is very nice and uh, I, couldn't, I couldn't recommend it enough. So definitely check out the links below, check out the rest of my channel if you haven't already, uh, hit the like and subscribe button if that's what you like to do when you like content. I shall be back at the end of the week with another app review. So thank you so much for watching and all of your support. We've passed 7,500 subscribers now, which is fantastic. Keep interacting, keep following me along. There's a lot of exciting stuff going on in the world of open source software.